I can't I can't see her doing something like that. I mean, she's super intelligent. You know? She's got a criminal I mean a uh um master's degree. Yeah. Or bat is it master's or bat I don't I don't know, one of the two. And and uh that's just sloppy. I mean that's sloppy shit. In a quiet town, under the scorching sun, Zach's life took a turn that he could never have foreseen. Police had discovered Taylor Wright, a friend of his wife, lying lifeless on his property. Suspicion loomed over Ashley, Zach's wife, as the potential murderer. But he was reluctant to accept this grim reality. Little did he know that the interrogation room would hold the key to unraveling the truth. Zack sat in the dimly lit room, his heart pounding as the detectives probed him for information. Can you tell me how you came to know Taylor? They asked. Zack recounted how they had first met through their work on private investigation cases and how Taylor had become friends with his wife. But Zach harbored doubts about Taylor's trustworthiness. Like that, and I told Ash, just you know, just don't bring her around me, because I don't. I'm trying to get hired on. I, I just, I thought she had a drug problem. Um, Ash kind of thought she. Did had you ever a, see anything though? No, like that. she carried a bag. She had a little bag that she just kept. Would she just guarded with her, and I just knew that something wasn't right. Um, I knew. Um, have y'all talked to, to Jess Wood at all about her? I have not. They were hanging out. For a little bit. How far back does that go? I don't know, just before Jess started dating this new girl. So, um, and I know that there was a night that she would vanish for days, unreachable, and her behavior had begun to raise suspicions. Zach tried to explain that their relationship was strained by her disappearing acts. As the questions continued, Zach tried to provide an alibi for his actions on September 8th, the day Taylor was last seen. At the seafood place at Nine Mile in Pine Forest, I ate there. And I remember eating by myself, and I remember Ash not being able to make it because she was tied up with work. So I ate by myself. He recounted using his debit card for lunch, insisting that he had been alone as Ashley was tied up with work. Did you end up paying, did you pay for cash or did you use I'll, debit I always card? my debit card. That's generally what I use is that one. That's the only thing I got is that debit card. And, 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 and who is that through? Wells Fargo. Okay. So you had to use your debit card there. Zach believed he was defending himself and had no linking of the mounting evidence against his wife. The 554 number. Do you always keep that on you? Yeah, I reckon. Do you ever loan it out to anybody? No. Okay. No. Would never. you ever loan it to anybody? Or No. Do you remember Ashley ever using it, taking it with her? No. Never. Okay. Did it ever get lost or stolen or anything and get replaced? No, not that I recall. Okay. The detective subtly pushed Zach, seeking to confirm his whereabouts through his phone records. It was a pivotal moment in the interrogation. They discussed the property where Taylor's body was found, the last place Zach claimed to have been. They inquired about his phone, ensuring that no one else had access to it. Amid the questioning, the detectives delved into financial matters, asking if Zach had any knowledge of the money that Taylor had entrusted to Ashley. Do you know anything about this money? that Taylor had given you all? No, absolutely not. She's never given me anything. Absolutely, but I mean, I've, I've read in the online or whatever what, what you're talking about. No, I've, I've never got anything like from that, no. Okay, do you, do you know anything about your finances? No, to be honest. I give her, when like when I work a case or like, and I, I got a uh, uh, settlement from my attorney, I hand it straight to Ash. She takes care of everything. How much was that check for? Uh, one check was almost 50 and the other check was almost 10, so almost approximately 60. I handed it straight to her. Do you know anything about your bills as far as how much you owe on credit cards or anything she like that? She pays everything. She takes care of it all, every single bit of it. Is there any indication that you guys are in financial trouble? No, I, no, I thought I'm living off my uh, 
the settlement I just got. And plus, she works every day. I mean, I haven't worked in a few months doing the PI stuff, but I no, I, I didn't know you had any financial problems at all. No, I mean, I just got sixty thousand dollars. I don't. As the conversation turned to guns and firearms, they asked about Ashley's gun ownership. Zach tried to be forthright, explaining his and Ashley's connection to firearms. Does she carry a firearm? I haven't seen her one in, in, in quite a while. Not at all. Mm -mm. Do you own a 38 airway? Yes. And that, I mean, she used to, that's the, the last thing I ever remember seeing her with was a 38 airway. And that was, I, I haven't seen her with that in I don't know how long. Any property uh, to y'all or Ashley or anybody to hold? Not that I know of, Jason. The tension in the room grew, and the detectives confronted Zach directly, asking if he had killed or participated in the murder. Did you kill or participate in Absolutely the death not. of... I, I would not ask this question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you kill or participate, or do you have any knowledge? Zero, Jason. Absolutely none. I don't want to be nowhere near it, no, nothing involved with it, nothing. I know nothing about it. His response was unequivocally, absolutely not. Zach vehemently denied any involvement or knowledge of the crime, visibly maintaining his composure and confidence. But the detectives pressed on, seeking to uncover Zach's thoughts and feelings as they detailed the mounting evidence against Ashley. He defended his wife, emphasizing her intelligence and education. I can't. I can't see her doing something like that. I mean, she's super intelligent. You know, she's got a criminal. I mean, a uh, um, master's degree. Yeah, or bat. Is it master's or bat? I don't. I don't know. One of the two. And and uh, that's just sloppy. I mean, that's. Zach was grappling with the inconceivable idea that his wife could be a murderer. The interrogation was emotionally charged as Zach wrestled with the logical evidence against Ashley. He couldn't fathom her involvement in such a gruesome crime. Despite his emotional denial, the detectives had seen enough. They knew the truth lay elsewhere. Zach consulted with his lawyer and signed a search warrant, allowing the detectives to access his phone records. And if you don't have any questions and you agree to it, you can sign right there. Eventually, he was cleared of any wrongdoing and allowed to return home. But his wife, Ashley, faced a different fate. In a courtroom, the jury delivered a verdict. Little lies from her. So, and it just, stuff just didn't start seeming right. And, and, uh... Ashley MacArthur was sentenced to life in prison with a mandatory 25-year sentence, now separated from her husband, serving her time behind bars for a crime that had shattered the lives of all involved.